Hey everybody, this is Jamie Cross, and I'm a graphic designer, a game developer, and I also teach game development using Game Salad. And what I'm going to be doing today for gamedevelopment.tuxplus.com is I'm going to teach you how to make a Flappy Bird style game using Game Salad. And in case you don't know what Flappy Birds is, here is a demo of the sample file you'll have completed by the end of this tutorial. This game is going to be an HTML5 game that you can play in your browser, and it's controlled by clicking the mouse. And when you click the mouse, the bee is going to fly. And what you want to do is fly the bee through the gaps to get score, just like you do in Flappy Birds. So let's get into this. When you download the source files, what you're going to have is an empty scene. It's already going to be set up. For the Game Salad Arcade, which is their version of HTML5 games. And in the one scene you need to make the game, there's already going to be the images you need and the sounds you need as well. So let's get this started. The first thing we're going to need to do is create a few game level attributes. The first one we're going to create is one for the score, so that's going to be an integer. I'm just going to call that score. Then we're going to need two Boolean attributes. The first one of those I'm going to call playing. And the second one I'm going to call dead. And these are literally going to keep track of if you're playing the game, this is going to be true. And if you're dead, this is going to be true. And that will trigger different events within the game. Let's create a few actors here and start getting the game set up. The first one we want to create is the background. So I'm just going to drag the background actor up into here. And we're also going to want to place the ground, which is going to scroll along the bottom of the background sky to simulate some movement for the bee when the bee is flying around the screen. Now for all of the actors in the game, I'm going to be turning off the physics settings by going under physics and making the density zero friction zero, and bounciness zero, because we're not really going to be using the physics engine of Game Salad. So I just want that to ignore all of the physics settings. And I'm going to be doing that for all of the actors. For the sky, I also don't want that to be movable, so I'm going to turn that off. Let's get that sky placed in here. I'm just going to drag it in, place it right in the center of the screen. There we go. Now this screen, since it's the Game Salad HTML5 screen size, it's 480 pixels wide by 320 pixels high. And that's going to come into play a little bit later. For the ground, I'm going to shut the physics off as well. And I want to leave that movable because we're going to set it up to scroll across the screen. Let's drag that in here. I'm just going to let it go for now. And I want to put that in a specific spot on screen here. I'm going to kind of drag it over, but double click it. And I want its position to be exactly 480 in the X position and 18 in the Y position. So that puts the left edge of the graphic for the ground right against the left edge of the screen area. And then we're going to set this up now to scroll from the right to the left endlessly while you're playing the game. What we need to do to make that happen is open up the ground actor. And the first thing I need to do is create a rule. And what this rule is going to do is it's going to control this ground actor's movement only when you're playing the game. So we just set up that game level attribute called playing. Only when that's true are the actions of this ground going to happen. Otherwise, we want the game to be paused because it's either going to be the beginning of the game where it's waiting for a click to start to play, or the B is going to be dead and it's going to be displaying the final score. So when the attribute game playing is true, we want to drag a move behavior in here. We want to move the ground directly to the left, which is 180, 
and I want that speed to be 200. Now we also want to spawn a new copy of the ground actor once this one is moving off screen. So as this ground actor moves across the screen like this, once the right edge reaches the right edge of the play area, we want to spawn a new ground over here. So it just continues to spawn endlessly while you play the game. Let me put this back where it belongs. Let's make that spawning happen. I'm going to go back into the ground. To make this spawn properly, we're going to need to add a new actor level attribute. I'm just going to make that a boolean and call it spawned. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow this ground to only spawn one copy of itself. We don't want it to spawn multiple copies over and over again. So I'm going to add a new rule. And this rule needs to come up inside this game rule here. And I'm going to call this gameplay. Because these things are only going to happen while the game is playing. So in here I want to check for a couple things. I want to check if that ground spawned is false. And then I also want to check the X position of the current ground. So I'm going to add another condition. And I want to check the attribute ground position X. And if that's less than or equal to zero, we want to go ahead and spawn a new copy of the ground. So let me grab this spawn actor behavior, choose ground, and then the position we want to spawn it at, we want 960 in this X position, and that's because the width of the ground is 960 pixels, and we want a new one to spawn all the way over here at the far right hand edge. And we don't need any offset for the Y direction. And these can stay relative to actor, relative to actor, and in front of actor is fine. Now to finish this ground off, we need to do one more thing. We're going to need to destroy the ground that moves all the way off the left hand side of the screen. Once that's gone off the screen, we can just eliminate that so Game Salad doesn't have to keep track of it anymore. So I want to add a new rule for that. And again, check the grounds position X. And this time, if that's less than or equal to minus 480, we want to go ahead and destroy that copy of the ground. I'm going to drag a destroy behavior in there. And what we're doing with that, once this ground, and remember its center point is the home point of all the graphics in Game Salad. So once this center point is equal to or less than minus 480, which puts it all the way over here on the left off the screen, this will get destroyed. So to test that, I need to temporarily make this playing attribute true. So I'm going to turn that on and let's take a look. The ground is scrolling. It spawns a new one. I see we have a little gap, but it did spawn a new one. And then that one spawned another one. So that's working fine, but let's get rid of that gap. In this spawn new ground, instead of 960, I'm just going to make that 955. And that should get rid of that gap just fine. I want to make this false again so we can continue on and not be playing the game. Now the next thing we're going to do back in the actors is I'm going to add a couple new empty actors. This first one I'm going to call controller. I'm going to add another one and call that goal. Both of these I'm going to take the physics away from. And this controller is not going to be movable. In the goal that is going to be movable. I'm still going to take the physics away. I'm going to give this a color temporarily just so we can see it on screen. Later on when the game is done, it's going to be invisible, but while we're developing, I want to be able to see it. So what this controller is going to do, 
is it's going to sit on screen all the way over here on the far right hand side and I want it to be centered exactly top to bottom so that position is 160 but like I said I'm going to drag it all the way off the screen so you can't see it it's just going to control some of the actions in the game and this goal is going to be with the B touches as it flies along the screen when the bee touches it, it's going to get a score. And it's also going to indicate that the bee has flown through the gap in the obstacles. For this goal, we need that to be a specific size. So I'm going to make the width of that 50 and the height 320. So let's take a look at that on screen for a second. If I put one of those on screen, you can see that with a height of 320, it covers the full game play area. So wherever the gap ends up being, the bee will be able to fly through and still hit this goal and get points and move on through to the next obstacle. For now, I'm going to delete that. What we're going to use this controller for is to spawn these goals onto the screen. So let's get that controller set up. And this controller should only spawn goals to the screen while the game is playing. So let's add a rule for that. We're going to check for the attribute game playing. If that's true, we're going to go ahead and spawn a goal. And we want those goals to spawn at specific intervals. So I'm going to use a timer behavior for that. I'm going to drag a timer in here and say every 1.5 seconds run this timer to completion and then all we need is a spawn actor behavior that's going to spawn a goal. We don't need to make any changes to the rest of this. So when I go into the goal, let's set up some behaviors for that. Just like the ground, we only want these goals to move if the game is playing. So let's set up another playing routine. Check for the attribute, game, playing. And if that's true, we want to go ahead and move these at the same speed the ground is moving. So I'm just going to copy this move behavior from the ground, go back into the goal, and paste it right in there. So it'll move at the same speed as the ground. Let's give this another quick play test. I'm going to go back and make this playing true again. and Make sure those goals are spawning to screen. The ground, of course, is still moving. There comes a goal, another one. Now you see the space in between is equal. It's the same space every time. That's controlled by that timer in the controller right here every 1.5 seconds. So if you wanted more space in there, you would say maybe make it 2 or 3 seconds. Or if you wanted less space, you would make it maybe 0.75 or 0.5 seconds. So that's where the gap space is coming from, from this timer right here. So let's add some more to this goal get these finished up. To build the actual gap in the obstacle, we need to add an actor level attribute that's going to be an integer. I'm just going to call that gap. And this is actually going to control the gap in the obstacles. So first of all, let's drag a change attribute up here above the game routine. And I'm going to change the value of gap to a random number. So I'm going to pick the random function and that has a minimum and a maximum. So I'm going to use 90 and 260. And what that is actually going to control is the gap where the bee can fly through above and below the ground obstacles that we saw in the quick tutorial at the beginning. In this 90 and 260 90 is just a little bit up above the ground and 260 is just a little bit below the top of the play area. So that's keeping the gap always within the live play area of the game. So it's not down below the ground or up above the play area where the bee could never get to. You obviously want to keep the gap in the live area of the game itself. And that's what that random number is going to control. So it's going to be different every time a new obstacle comes on screen it's going to be at a different height 
but still within the play area. Now we need to actually spawn the obstacles above and below the gap. Let's spawn the top one first. So I'm going to drag a new spawn actor behavior in here. And let me name this. Because there's going to be a top and a bottom. I don't want to get confused. Now we haven't added the obstacles yet. So they're not in the actor list. Let's go back and do that. In the images, this obstacle right here, I'm going to drag this one in. We need two copies of this. Like I said, there's going to be a bottom and a top. Let me call this one bottom. Put a space in there. I want to zero out the physics again, but leave it movable because it is going to move on screen. Let me make a copy of this one. Call this top obstacle. Delete copy. Now we'll have access to those. In the actor pull down, I can now choose top obstacle. We need to change a couple settings here now in this one. For the X position, I want to choose the goal position X so it's centered right over the goal. And then for the offset, remember this is the top obstacle. So I'm going to choose goal. We're going to start with the gap. It's picked up here. It picks a random gap every time, remember. And then we're going to add 210 pixels to it. So it moves the obstacle up above the gap. And you want to choose relative to scene in this case. And before we can play test this new spawning of the top obstacle, we need to actually make that obstacle move. And it's going to use the same game routine as this right here. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go into these obstacles, the top, paste that in there. While I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and paste it into the bottom obstacle as well. So now they'll both have their move routines. Let's play test that and make sure at least the top obstacle is moving and displaying on screen properly. So the ground is moving, the goal is there, and these top obstacles are now showing up right. Now we got to make the bottom one show up, and I also need to flip this top obstacle around so the green grass is down below. Let's do that first. I'm going to go back into the top obstacle. You see the green grass is at the top. All we need to do to flip that is go under graphics, flip vertically. And now when I play it, it'll be flipped and the grass will be down below. You can see green there now. So there we go. So let's get the bottom obstacle spawning correctly. Back in goal. What I want to do, I'm going to copy this spawn top obstacle. I'm going to make a little change to it. Of course, I'm going to call it spawn bottom. Then all we need to do is in this offset, because it's the bottom obstacle, just need to make that minus 210 instead of plus 210. And now when we play test this, we'll have the top obstacle, the bottom obstacle, and the goal in between. But I see I actually made a mistake on this. We don't want to respawn the top obstacle, we want to spawn the bottom obstacle. Because that's the one that's not flipped at this point. So there we go. Now they're all facing in the proper direction. And they're all scrolling just like they should be. Now we're also going to need to destroy this goal and the obstacles when they move off the left hand side of the screen just like we did with the ground. So I'm going to create a rule and again, we want to check for the X position. So when the X position of the goal is less than or equal to minus 50, because this goal is only 50 pixels wide, it doesn't have to move nearly as far off the screen as the ground to be gone from the left hand side. So it only needs, it needs to move really only 25 pixels off the screen because that's half the width of this actor. 
but 50 is fine. I'm going to drag a destroy in here. I'm going to copy this and put it in these obstacles as well. So they'll get destroyed when they move off the left hand side of the screen. So that takes care of all of the background, all of the scenery, and all of the obstacles coming at you during the game. What we need to do now is set up the B. So I'm going to drag the first frame of the B's animation in here. Set up a B actor. First one I'm going to call just B. I'm going to zero its physics out as well. I'm going to make a copy of that. Call it B Demo. Because as you may have noticed in the tutorial, there's a little B that moves up and down, waiting for you to click the screen to begin to fly it. And that's what this B Demo is. So let's get that set up first. In this actor, the first thing we want to do is animate it. So I'm going to drag in an animate behavior. And the frames of this animation are numbered 1, 2, and 3. So you just drag those in 1, 2, 3, and then frame 2 is also frame 4. I want that to move at 20 frames per second so those little wings flap fairly quickly and you want to make sure that loops so it'll loop from frame 4 back to frame 1 and just animate endlessly. We'll also need a rule in here that's going to control the game loop for this B demo. This time we're going to watch for the attribute game playing but when that's false we want the B to just kind of bounce up and down on screen and wait for the player to click the mouse to play. We're going to make him bounce up and down by using a constrain attribute behavior. We're going to constrain the B's position Y to an expression. What that expression is going to be is 25 times then the sine function And for the angle within the sine function, we want to use B time, so that becomes self time, times 300, then outside the parens, plus 208. And I'll explain this formula to you in a minute after we take a look at it. So I'm going to put this B demo actor on screen. Just going to drag that over here. Right about here should be fine. Now we want to make sure this playing is back to false the way it should be. Let's check this out. Now that B just continually will move up and down right here on screen at a fairly decent pace. So now let me explain to you what that formula is. What this is, the 25 is the distance the B will move up and down from its center location. And then using the sine function in its self time, it's going to move up and down at a speed of 300. And its starting Y position on screen is going to be 208. So if I wanted it to be more down towards the bottom of the screen, I would make this 50. Now see he's all the way down at the bottom of the screen. Let's move him back up. But if I wanted him to say have a lot more distance from his top to his bottom position, I could make that 75. Now he's back up at the top, but he goes all the way off screen and much further down. So that's how that formula works. So back to our game, I want that to be 25 and the rest of that to stay as it is. Now remember this rule is checking for when game playing is false. 
And when game playing becomes true, we want to do something else. What we want to do is spawn a new actor. And I want to spawn the actual B actor that's going to be playing the game. We don't need to make any changes to the rest of this. And I also want to destroy this B demo actor. So I'm going to drag that in right here. Now we're going to set it up. So when you click the mouse button, it'll spawn the B to play, and this B demo will be destroyed, and the game will start. To start the game, we're going to need to add one more actor, just to complete this pause screen at the beginning. What that's going to be is this graphic that says click to fly. Drag that up in here. And this doesn't need any physics and doesn't need to be movable. It's just going to act as scenery. I also want to change its alpha channel to 0.5. That'll just tint it back on screen a little bit so it doesn't have the same color focus as the demo B does. You'll still be able to see it clearly, it just won't have the focus. We need to add a couple rules in here to make this work. So I'm going to create a rule, and this rule is going to have to have a couple conditions on it. The first one is so we're going to check for the attribute game playing and this time we're going to check when game playing is false and then we also want to check for when the mouse button is down so that's going to be when the player clicks on the screen and that's going to unpause the game and start it so what we want to do is change an attribute and we want to change this game playing too true because remember it starts out as false and then when that becomes true we also want to destroy this actor that's on screen so it disappears when the game starts I'm gonna put this actor actually on screen drop it there I'm gonna center it I'm going to put it center point, basically right on the center point of the screen itself. Now if I were to go ahead and play test this now, once I click this and the actual B comes on screen to play, the B wouldn't do anything yet because we haven't added any actual behaviors to the B that you're going to play in the game. So let's do that before we play test this. We'll want this version of the B to animate just like the demo version of the bee with those little wings flapping up and down. But because this bee can die in the game when you hit an obstacle, we only want him to animate while he's alive. So let's set up a rule to control that. We want to check when the attribute game dead is false because that would mean the bee is alive. So when that is false, we want to animate the bee. I'm just going to go to this B demo to make my life easy. Copy this, paste it into that rule. So now this B will animate. We'll also need a rule here that keeps track of all the actions when the game is actually playing. So when the attribute game playing is true, this is where we're going to put most of the B's actions. And the first one we're going to do is we're going to give the B some gravity. So when it's not flying, it'll fall down towards the ground. I'm going to use an accelerate behavior for that. We want to accelerate it straight down towards the ground, which is 270. And I want it to pull you down pretty hard. So I'm going to put 800 in the acceleration. The next thing we want to add here is the ability for the B to fly up whenever you click the mouse button. We're going to control that with a rule. Let me drag this up into the proper game loop up here. When the player is pressing the mouse button down, we want the B to fly up on screen. We're going to do that by changing an attribute. We're going to change the B's motion 
linear velocity y to positive 250. And that will make the B fly up when the player presses the mouse button down. I also want the B to make a sound occasionally, a buzzing sound when he's flying. So to control that, I'm going to create a new actor level attribute. I'm going to make it an integer. I'm just going to call it sound. And I only want that sound to happen when somebody is pushing the mouse button down. So we're going to put it in this same routine. I want to change the attribute b sound to a random number between 1 and 5 because I don't want the b to play its buzzing sound every time the mouse button is clicked that would get irritating just once in a while so you get a b sound then we're going to want to add a new rule right under that change attribute and we're going to check when the attribute b sound equals 1 I want to play the sound I'm going to drag in a play sound behavior and I already have sounds loaded like I showed you at the beginning of the tutorial so I want to play the sound buzz I want the volume of that to only be 0.5. So occasionally, approximately every fifth time you press the mouse button, it's going to make its buzzing sound. Now the next thing we're going to need to add to this game loop is when the bee crashes into any of the obstacles. Before we do that, we need to go to the Actors tab and make a new tag. I'm going to add a tag. I'm going to call it crash. And then in this crash tag, we need to drag the bottom obstacle, the top obstacle. And I'm going to add a new actor. I'm going to call this ground collision. I'm going to drag that actor in here as well. And what this ground collision is going to be is it's going to be a transparent actor over this ground area. So if you happen to fly straight down while you're playing the game and hit the ground, you're going to die also. So let's go back to the B and add that crash. That's going to be controlled by a rule. I'll drag that right in below fly. Call it crash. So when the B overlaps or collides with an actor with the tag that we just set up, the tag of crash, first thing we want to do is play the crashing sound, which is smack. And then I want to change an attribute. And the attribute we're going to change is the game level attribute dead to true because the bee is going to have hit an obstacle so now it's going to be dead. So there's one last thing in the game loop to handle and that's the scoring when the bee touches the goal. I'm going to drag a new rule in there right below crash call it score and this is going to watch for when the bee overlaps or collides with the actor of type goal because remember that's going to be in the gap between the two obstacles when that happens we want to play the sound for score which is called score and then we want to increment the score by one and we're going to do that with a change attribute I'm going to change the attribute game score to game score plus one. So that'll give you one point every time the B goes through a gap. That's it for the game loop.
there's still a couple things outside that loop we're going to have to do. The first one is to handle the killing of the bee. And what we're going to do here is watch for the attribute game dead. When that's true, I want to flip the bee upside down because it's going to die, flip over, and hit the ground. So I'm going to change the attribute B graphics flip vertically to true. That'll flip the B graphic upside down. I'm going to copy this change attribute. And what I want to change now is the B motion linear velocity Y to minus 800. And that'll send the bee down really quickly to the ground. There's one last behavior to add, and that's going to be a collide behavior. And we want the bee to collide with that ground collision we just set up a minute ago. Let's add that ground collision actor to the scene. Here's the ground collision actor. I want to zero its physics out. Make it not movable. And I also want to make it transparent or invisible. So I'm going to set its alpha to zero. Now when I drag that on the screen, I'm just going to cover this bottom area of the screen where this ground graphic is. And that's going to act as our collision if the bee would come down and hit the ground. So let's give this a play test and see how all those changes we made work out. When it starts, the screen is paused. We have that click to fly graphic here. And this bee demo is just hovering up and down waiting for me to click. Now when I click, we have the bee. I just hit an obstacle and the bee died. Now one thing we haven't set up is to stop this movement when the bee dies. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to handle that bee dying and the stopping of the motion in the final display of the score that's going to come up on screen after the bee dies. So let's add a couple actors here. There's actually going to be two actors for the score. First one I'm just going to call score. I'm going to add another, call it final score. Let's set up the final score first. I'm going to zero out the physics, of course. I'm also going to make its color completely transparent. And this is just the color of the actor. This is going to display some text. And the text color is going to be set up in the display text behavior. Set a rule here, and this rule is going to check when the attribute game dead is true. We're going to display the text for the final score with a display text behavior. I'm going to want this to be the font Helvetica New. 30 pixels is fine, color white is going to be fine, and what I want it to say is. We need to put quotations in here because this is in the expression editor. So quotes, final, we have to hold down option for a space, again because it's in the expression editor, score, colon, another option space, quotes, and then two dots. And this two dots is going to concatenate this text with the value of score. So that will display your final score on screen. Now also in this routine I want to change an attribute. The attribute we're going to change is game playing to false. And that's what's going to stop the motion of all the obstacles in the ground. Now there's one more thing to do here. I want the game to reset after you've had time to read what your final score is and realize that the bee has died, I'm going to use a timer behavior. 
put that under the display text and say after four seconds want that to run to completion and then we want to reset the whole game now we have to get this placed on screen for it to have any effect let me just drop that on here I'm going to center that and I can just leave that right there and then the text will display and it'll do its job when the time comes now I also want to set up the regular score display so while you're playing the game you can see how many points you have so let's zero these out also not movable also transparent so I'm going to add a rule here and I only want this score to display while you're playing the game so we're going to say when game playing is true display text I want to display game score I'm going to change that to Helvetica new as well only make it 20 points white's going to be fine let's get that placed on screen right there in the middle should be fine now let's give this a play test and it should basically all come together and work just like the tutorial at the beginning when I click this the game should start the score appeared up there at the top zero the sounds are playing I just died and everything stopped final score displayed but I did see that we need to make this goal area transparent so you don't see that green line in there so let's do that it's gonna to go to goal go to color make the alpha value zero so that leaves the goal there it just makes it transparent now when we play we have Buzzy B who is a lot like Flappy Bird now you could stop there and have an exact Flappy Bird clone but you probably don't want to do that at this point there's already probably a hundred or who knows how many copies of that on the various app stores I would definitely want to make it my own at this point and some of the things you could do to make it your own let's take a look at that in this controller we have this timer set up that's spawning the obstacles every 1.5 seconds so there's a consistent time between each one you could vary this number so there's not always the same gap between each obstacle maybe one comes out after two seconds one comes out after five or maybe they get closer together as the game goes on so you would decrease this value over time so the obstacles get closer and closer together another option might be where the obstacles have the gap you could vary the size of that gap remember that gap is handled in here the distance of that gap is handled here in the spawn top and spawn bottom obstacles if you were to come in here and change this number to less than 210 so if it was plus maybe 200 and this one was minus 200 you'd have less of a gap in between your obstacles and it would be more difficult to fly through them another thing you might think about doing is actually moving the obstacles up and down on screen so as the bees flying to the right the obstacles the gap in between them is moving up and down so you have to try to fly through these moving obstacles as they come by another thing you might think about is adding power-ups for the bee maybe he picks up a honeycomb and becomes invincible and he can just fly through anything for a certain amount of time so there's really a lot of ways you could personalize this and change it up so it's not an exact copy of Flappy Bird there's a lot of things you could do to really make it your own so think about that play with the behaviors and see what else you could come up with 
So that's it for this Flappy Bird tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot out of it, and I'll see you soon.